Woo wee, what's going on YouTube? It's not every all day. So here's the deal. I was told uh recently, and not even by anyone in my own camp, but someone right here on YouTube, they're like, dude, you need to take it easy for a little while. And uh and don't worry about the the hard use videos. I still got to though. And, he, and then he said, you should just do another knife sale. So I figured I just did a knife sale and I have a few pieces left, so I'll do an update. But then I will also um, show you the blades in the new knife sale because my new knife sale I was going to set up maybe later in the week or whatever. Um, but I'll just I'll start it now. That way, whatever goes through it and then whatever's left from the other one, I could just make one big knife sale after that. This is the um, this pile of knives, not including the ones that are still left over is the last pile of knife sale blades I have. So any knife sales I do after these are gone will just be like randomly, um, all right, you know, I got a new knife in and I'm gonna let it go and and that's it. So I'm not gonna have any more big knife sales after these. So this is it. Um, let's uh, let's go over what we have. Now remember, it's pretty easy. I'll put the, um, the uh, PayPal address, it's just, it looks like an email address, a Yahoo email address. You go to PayPal, you type that in, and it just says, okay, send money too. And you do that. It's super simple. I'll even let you snail mail. I don't care. Um, it just remember to comment down below, I want this because first come, first serve. Don't pay for it before you find out if it's still available. Uh, all right, let's make it easy. So I still have the um, two original um mod folding knives and i have those going for 200 bucks one of them alone is like 385 dollars so don't ask to go below 200 um 200 bucks for two in the original packaging come on man come on man and then the daniele moro um i honestly have no idea how i still have this somebody actually asked me they're like oh i want that Daniel Amoro, and then he fizzled out. No idea. So, one of the most badass knives on the planet. Um, I've already talked about it 150 times. Um, still have this, and I have this going for $300. you are not going to get a $1,000 knife for $300 outside of right here. So, I have those two. Outside of that, the, the knives I have left from the last sale... I have a, a few pieces. I sold, I think, five. And so I have the SE PR4, 100 bucks. 100 bucks for the SE PR4. That is a screaming deal on a phenomenal freaking knife. Um, I have the grab bag. Um, let me see, let me see. Uh, uh, the grab bag is at 300. Um, and there's like... 10 knives in that grab bag. Um, and some of them are banging up. Hold on a second. I'm going to have to replay that. I could have swore I heard somebody just say, hey. Um, and then, But there's nobody here. Uh, so if you heard it, let me know. Maybe it was a, maybe it was the movement of the chair. Um, I was like, somebody just say, hey. So <clears throat> the grab bag is $300. And you're getting... Um, you're getting, let's see, a knife that retailed for 100 You're getting a knife that retailed for, I think, almost $200. you are getting another knife that retailed for well over $100. Um, so then there's a bunch of other, there's some $50 knives and stuff like that. So for $300, bucks, you are getting a screaming deal. Uh, outside of that, I have the, I'm trying to grab everything with my left hand. I have the Karen Hood Chopper, CRKT. Um, for those who don't know, you just don't know. This knife is super hard to find. Um, and it is uh, a really um, desirable knife. This thing is freaking amazing. This is amazing. Uh, but I have that uh, going for 250 on the Karen Hood Chopper. Um, if you don't believe me on this knife, look them up. It's, it's worth your time. Um, let's see. I only have, I think two more. So I have this one that I had going for a hundred bucks. You can make me an offer. I really don't care. Um, this is an actual issued USN, 
uh, World War One, World War Two knife um, that was in disarray when I got it, and I breathed life back into it, gave it an edge, pulled the handle back together, <laughs> the handle's like my thumb, it's pulled back together, and check out the pommel. You're not going to see too many of these. The wooden pommels left. Oh, man, all the light is fading away. But check that out, man. That is super freaking cool. So uh, I have it for 100 If you want to make an offer, you can make an offer. If you want to make an offer on a, a few of these things, make an offer. I don't care. Um, I'm listening. I'm listening. And the last thing I had going for, I think it was only 200 bucks. 200 bucks is a... Uh, a Rambo Trio. So, uh, so you have the Rambo 3, the uh, Hollywood Collectibles Group version, which is the biggest, the longest version of all of them. You have the limited, very limited edition, chrome, chromed out Rambo 4 machete. Oh, man, those are awesome. And the limited edition numbered, um, Rambo boot knife, 200 bucks, get you all three of those shipped to your door. Um, and that's, that's another thing is, um, every price I give you is shipping included. All right. So let's get on to the new sale, the, the stuff that's going on. And the reason I wanted to do this sale and I kept all these knives together is because all these knives are either ones I made or ones I worked on. Um, like it just, it's like stuff that went through the D bad custom pile, like stuff that I got a little frisky with. And uh, that's why we're going. So I have some budget pieces that I'll, I'll show you first. Um, I got this Camillus a while back. It's a really nice little drop point Camillus, right? Pretty, pretty sweet. Everybody knows them. And if they, if they have uh, like, well, it's got tree sap on it. I'll clean them all up before I sell them. But I did custom scales and I re kind of grounded all through here. I did regrinding. I regrinded um the end to give it a little uh like window break type thing um i regrinded the shape down here now i did these for myself and i'm realizing now i didn't do they're not perfect but i did it for my just because i needed a knife and i wanted it to work so i did it quick but um i did some hollow pins on there and some um custom scale work so i have this guy the camillus and I'm pairing it with a knife, and there's going to be a couple where they're, you're getting two knives instead of one. Uh, so there's the Camillus, and then there's this guy right here. This is the Texas Bowie. And remember, it, I'll clean this up. It's it, they're just it's dirty, but um, it had the uh, the brass spine guard, and it popped off when I was um, testing the knife. But I so what I did is I just ended up giving it some tooling on the top there, and um, and that's pretty much it. I tooled the top, got rid of all the, the glue, stuff like that. Um, and I have that. So the Texas, uh, the Texas Bowie and Camillus combo, 30 bucks, 30 bucks. That's a really, that's cheap. That's cheap, man. Ah, oh, really hurts using this finger and I'm putting everything down on this side. That sucks. So the next one is, is one that I, freaking love um this one i didn't think i was gonna get rid of but i'm gonna um this is a tracker x uh, a tracker x from um off-grid knives but this knife has an actual story uh let's see i have this going for 50 bucks and it's kind of nostalgic to me so i don't know why i'm selling it for 50 bucks but when this knife came out the grip was terrible like there was no undercut here it kind of went almost all the way to there and um it was really uncomfortable and i had other people grab it and they were like ah, i don't like it um and the entire grip ended like this like that was it this was not like that so what i did is i redid this entire grip i carved all throughout here Gave it a really, really beautiful profile. And then the guy that grabbed it when I first showed it to him, because I, th I thought, I'm like, well, maybe it's just me. And then I had a buddy come over. And I'm like, dude, feel this knife. And he's like, oh, literally his, his, his reaction went, Ugh. that was his reaction. Um, and then I finished it and I had him come back over and he was like, oh, that's way better. So what's so special about this is Carrie, the owner of our off grids, who's freaking awesome and listens to customers. Um, he's not cold steel. He actually listens. Um, 
he started making another version where it was more contoured. And I, I showed him this. I showed him I showed him my video, like saying, you know, hey man, this is not very good. Um, but you'll see it's it's been redone. So this knife started the whole um redesign on the off-grid trackers. So this knife takes credit for that. Um pretty awesome. And I have it going for 50 bucks. That's awesome. That's awesome. So so that's that. Um, next, I'll, I have a Cisco pair, and uh, they're both pieces that I customized. This one is the Cisco, what's it called? Um, I don't know, Texas Bowie or whatever it is. It even has that round tip. <laughs> um, but I completely redid the finish on this knife. I wanted to give it a San Mai look, so you'll see how I did the edging. And it came out phenomenal looking. Remember, it had um, this the brass spine guard. It was like a Muso wannabe type thing. Um, it's exactly what it was. It was a, a like a Muso remake. But again, using it, the spine brass guard came off, but the rest of the knife held up perfect. So I was like, I'm going to make this knife cool looking. And that's what I did. So this knife is really cool. It's got a badass finish i mean the finish is just sweet so you'll notice that because there was a uh, spine guard there's if you shake it there's a little bit of room because there used to be a spine guard that went right here and now there's not but it doesn't matter because it holds in there fine it's a big ass knife you don't even need the strap but it has the strap um so you got that one right and this is going to be a paired knife what do i have this going for this is going to be good yeah this is going to be good because all the work I did to this next one. So remember when I did the Pale Rider buoy that uh, the great Stefan Klaus has right now? Um, everyone was like, you need to do more of those. And I did this one. This was originally a Cisco high carbon buoy. And if you know what they look like, this is not the original grip. The original grip was like this um, kind of, it was kind of an ugly wood. Um, it had three little, little tiny pins in it. Um, it didn't have a lot of the contouring here. It kind of just was a little flat. It had the um, uh, the big S guard, like the huge S guard on it. So I, I didn't like that. And it had just a plain blade. So the other night I was working on a new, um, a new style of camo and I worked on it on this blade. And check this out. Look at how cool this camo pattern came out. This is a one-off, complete custom. This is the only blade I did with that camo pattern, too. Um, that right there is freaking cool. So this one is a complete, recustomized, reworked, retooled um, Cisco high-carbon buoy. This knife is one that I swear by. I think this is one of the best budget knives on the planet. Um... And now it's completely redone. So I have the pair of these going for 70. Um, that's shipped to your door. Two big knives. Um, 70 bucks with finishes that you're not going to see on any other ones. Because they're, anytime you do a finish like that, it's a one-off. Um, so I have those. So then I have three more. I have uh, well, actually four more. Um, one pair and then three individual knives. This one right here I'll talk about because I really, this is one of those ones where I was like, oh, I should just keep this one because the way it came out was pretty awesome. It was a Gilhibbon Extreme Survival Knife. Still got the original Gilhibbon sheath um, and it has the original Gilhibbon blade. The rest is, none of it is Gilhibbon. So you can see, and I will clean it up. Um, I used it because it's awesome. Uh, this knife is freaking amazing. It was like a uh, like a tribute to a Rambo knife that he did, but he probably put on the worst handle you'll ever see on any knife. It was just awful. It was a cheap rat tail. It was just stunk. And the rat tail ended up breaking off. I even have, oh, you see this black line right there? Because I, I made the guard quick. I still have want to grind away that. Um, and a little piece right here, I was just like to make it more even because I made it for myself. So I didn't care if it was even or not. And then I looked at it and I'm like, oh, I could just grind away the, the rest of it. It's an aluminum guard. It's a fully custom aluminum guard that I made. Um, I, I did the grips um, 
what did I make the grips out of? I don't remember what I used, but you can see that right there, right? Because that's where the rat tail attached to. And so what I did is I just made it a full tang, but I didn't want to grind it all the way down to make it evenly full because then it would be thinner right here. And I didn't want that because I wanted grip. So this is a fully glued on um, 550 cordage. And this knife right here, this is awesome. This is a really badass knife. It is tough as nails. Um, this is super freaking cool. Uh, so I have this one and I went with the green because if you're going to do, you know, the, the Rambo tribute should have a little green there. Um, and that one I have going for, um, 80 bucks. So 80 bucks can get you the customized hidden, uh, it's getting worse and worse, the nerves. All right. So the next one is, a, is another discontinued blade. Really hard to find. If you don't believe me, go look. Um, they're expensive because people always wanted them. Now, I had a love-hate relationship with this knife because it, it was done with Chris Reeves, who is freaking awesome. Um, but the design was terrible. It was it was a uh, uh, what you call it? LHR. It was a uh, Larson. Uh, Harvey and Reeve and um, Reeve makes awesome, awesome knives, just awesome. Um, and I, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what parts exactly were the other two designers, but the design was super jacked. I hated it. I mean, hated everything about it. It had the cheapest rubber grips on it with only lines that went this way on a on a big heavy knife you don't put lines that go that way on a big heavy knife because the knife's gonna fly out of your hand it had the worst sheath it was just terrible i mean terrible sheath um and then it had all these points that hit the hand like right here you'll see it was ground out right there right there was a point like a point so you grab it and it would hurt you back here where i rounded it off was a point it came through and had a sharp, like shark tooth point. So when you pushed it into the sheath, it was stabbing the back of your hand. It was freaking awful. Then there was like another point up here or something. So I just gave it some really nice jimping there. I gave it some oversized jimping. So it's really not um, aggressive on the thumb. You could do this all day long and not hurt yourself. From there to there, it was beautiful. It was a great piece of blade right there. Um, the grips were bad. I just did my own, um, grips just to throw on there so I could use it. Um, and it made it so much better. Taking off all the points that hurt was the best thing. And you could see how far down I had to grind on this blade to get rid of all the bad stuff. I mean, it was just bad, bad, bad. Um, one thing that little grind does is it gives you a little, a little tiny finger rest if you're doing some uptight stuff. Um, but now the guard, which was bad for some reason, this thing hooked way in terrible. I mean, the design was terrible. The knife is great, bad design. It happens all the time. Sometimes you had a great design and it's a crappy knife. This was a great knife with a crappy design, but I, uh, I got rid of all the parts that were bad. And what's left over is now it went from LHR. That's what I always forget. Now it went from LHR to LHRD bad. So it, it's just way more comfortable in the hand. It's way more usable now. Um, I mean, way more usable. It's way user friendly. Not only that, but you get an actual leather sheath a real leather sheath, a good leather sheath. And how do I know? Because this leather sheath is the same leather sheath that is on the D-Bad War Machine. And it fits this knife doo -doo 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 -doo, like a glove. It is perfect. So you have this guy right here. Um, and I have this one going for 120. So 120. I know it's not as pretty and shiny because it looks like a knife that was used and ground out a bit, but this knife is freaking amazing. That's a great knife. The sheath alone, I mean, you might spend 
40 bucks on a sheath like this that's made this way. Super, super, super duper nice. All right, the last two. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna sell it. I wasn't going to, but I'm gonna sell it. This is now I can flip this around because I had it set up for a lefty, and now we can set it back up for a righty. Um uh wait, wrong way. Wrong way. I'm all screwed up now. Here we go. So now I could reset it up for a righty because it'll click in there. Um, I'm a lefty, so I, I just switched the frog around, and now we will set it up properly. So there you go. This is the Cold Steel 1917 Frontier buoy. Now, the only issue I had with this knife was the awful handle. I hated it. Hated the handle. This knife is sharp. It came sharp. It is wonderful. This knife is wonderful. It had a a really boxy, really awful um, grip on there. So, and this was like, eh, eh, eh. it was all like just linear. It was so edgy. So what I did is I gave it a bird's head because I wanted it to match my bird's head revolver. And that was that was the whole process in, in coming up with this. Um, and I have to say, this handle, it, it's, I, it's smaller, I know but I kept it wide. Now I'm a lefty and I kept it wider on one side than the other because of the way it would work in the hand. So what this is gonna do for a righty is it's gonna pull the blade closer to your actual fingers. I know the, the video's flipped. This is my right hand, not my left. Um, so it pulls the blade closer to the hand. So when you hit, you're gonna have more control because it's gonna be close to the hand where this side is gonna be more grip for your fingers. So that's where that's positive. I did it opposite for a lefty because what I wanted was to twirl and throw. So I put the weight away from my hand. To use the knife as a knife, you want the weight closer to your hand. So it actually works out really well for a right-handed person. Um, with double XL hands, I can grab this knife perfectly. If you have smaller hands than me, which you most likely do, you're probably going to really like this grip. Um, but I even used wooden pegs from the same tree that I took the scales from. So this is from my backyard. Um, and this thing is, this thing is fantastic. Fantastic. So I have the 1917 buoy for a hundred bucks. Look at that, man. That just looks beautiful. It looks older now. You know what I mean? Other than that linear piece of garbage that was on there. Um, it just gives it a more timeless look. The wooden scales, it's all JB welded. So the wooden scales are just so it would, wouldn't would slide back and forth when you're setting it pretty much because JB Weld's not going to go anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Um, but that thing is super duper dupe. All right. And the last one I have is I, I was doing a machete series. I did a minchetti, a mini machete, and a machete sword series. And I have two pieces left. Um, one of them is the original minchetti. So this was my first one that I made. Um, it's a little sax style. Um, it is very linear, um, but it's a sax style uh, machete blade. I don't have a sheath for this, so it would just be this, but it's going to come with this. And uh, I will clean this up, but check this blade out. I was literally just using it. Um, this thing came out really cool. I made this one. And it was freaking awesome. It's it's obviously tooled all the way up the spine. I gave it this wicked nasty clip point. Um, and it is really cool. And I have this um, lightweight nylon camp sheath um, that I had laying around. And I was like, holy crap, that's going to work out perfect for the machete sword. So I have this pair right here that I made. You have equal grips on both. Um, and I'm going to do that for 60 bucks for the pair, 60 shipped for a pair of, uh, of customs. And I'm wondering, I don't know, but I'm wondering, you can even double it up. You can double it up, take it to the campsite and you can have your small knife and your machete all right there. That's kind of cool, man. So so that's it that's the the new knife sale whatever you want let me know let me know don't just buy um and we'll get you all settled uh don't forget the other blades in the sale and that's it for this one i am donnie b all day till next video